I'd like to welcome everybody to this, to this Zoom meeting of the College of Science and Engineering. Uh, my name is Brad Johnson, and I have the privilege of serving as the Dean of the College of Science and Engineering. And I will get a chance to tell you a little bit about what that means, but I'm gonna start with a, a screen share here just to give you a picture of things. Uh, let's see. Sorry. Okay, so the, just to orient us all what we're doing here, so what, what is the College of Science and Engineering? So we are part of the University of the Western Washington University, which is organized into seven colleges. And each college is organized into departments and programs and um, other units that are sort of try to be focused around um, some sort of, you know, commonality of academic interest or commonality of curriculum. So that's, that's the basic idea about how, the, how the, the university is organized. And so the College of Science and Engineering is our college, and I get to serve as the administrative lead for that college. Um, so what, what I'll do next is... Um, look at the college as a whole to let you know what's going on. So the purpose of this event really is to try to give you as much information as I can about the college, how it works, how it operates, and to give you a chance to ask questions. So um, normally I have people say, I feel free to interrupt me along the way if something strikes you. We always have a question session at the end for sure because my experience with this is that the questions and answer sessions are generally the, the best parts of these get-togethers in terms of getting you the information you're interested in. So as we go along, you can keep your, uh, your eye on, on what's going on here, and you can also use the chat sessions to enter questions if you would like. I have someone helping me with that so that we can keep an eye on that. And at the end, of course, we can have questions, and I'd either, I'm, I'm happy to answer them either verbally or if you want to enter them via the chat, that's fine as well. So the main idea, again, is to make sure that you get your questions answered and that you get the information you're looking for about the college. So the college itself is, con consists of nine units. It's seven departments and two programs. And I've listed here the departments. So these are the departments organized by academic discipline. And this is, these are the departments that have been authorized to grant degrees, bachelor's degrees, bachelor of science degrees, bachelor of arts degrees, and in some cases, master of science degrees. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically step through each of these and give you a very broad brush overview of all of the programs and let you know what the degrees that are offered and what sorts of things are important to us and all of that with each program. And then if it again, if that inspires a question from you, I'm very happy to try and answer that. So um, let me just get started with The Department of Biology. So the biology department is one of our largest departments in terms of numbers of majors and numbers of faculty. And one of the themes I'm gonna hit on in every one of the departments I'll hit on right away, and that is that we're very serious in this college about not only the, the basic in-class and in-lab academics that you'll learn as a major in one of our departments, but also the opportunity that you'll have in this college to expose yourself to what we call authentic experiences. Now, usually in many, in most, most departments that consists of a research experience with a faculty member, where you're in the field or in the lab doing research with a faculty member that's actually a, a meaningful experience for you as a student being a main participant, not just someone who's off in the corner washing test tubes or whatever that is, but actually a participant in the actual research that's occurring. And you would be a part of any dissemination of that research, whether it be presenting at a conference or going, you know, pr publishing a paper. This is, we feel, one of the most authentic ways you can experience what it is we have to offer in this college. So in the Department of Biology, we offer both BA and BS degrees in biology, 
And it's broken into several different areas. So the areas you see here are cell and molecular biology, and then ecology, organismal, and evolutionary biology. There's also um, education degrees, and then there's also currently we have something that's the marine emphasis biology track, but that's going to be soon uh, changed because we're offering a marine and coastal sciences bachelor's degree program, which will start um, officially a year from this coming fall, which would be um, a degree program in and of itself. It will encompass parts of the Department of Biology parts of the Department of Geology, parts of Huxley College of the Environment, and the Shannon Point Marine Center down in Anacortes, Washington. So that's the main overview of biology and the things they, they also offer master's degrees in biology. Um, they offer research experiences that span all of these experiences from cell and molecular biology and, and um, look at the microbiology of organisms to ecology and organismal biology, evolutionary biology, and so field work, field research. It has to do with both animals and plants, whole ecosystems, individual organisms, and, and that's, the, that's the main idea there. So let me pause for a moment. Okay. So um, the marine biology emphasis in a sense will go away, but it's not just from the Department of Biology. It's being subsumed into the greater um, degree program um, that it will be called the Marine and Coastal Sciences. So that's, it's not, it's not a department, it's a program that will be consisted of the biology department, geology department, some, some chemistry department, uh, the environmental sciences department in Huxley College and the Shannon Point Marine Center. So all of that will be a part of this one big program most, if not all, of the program that was in marine emphasis and marine biology will be subsumed into that program. So that's where that's going. The Department of Chemistry is one of our most research active departments. Um, the department does a large amount of federal funded research. Sorry, I just kicked myself there. The department does a lot of federally funded research and students are a big part of that, both graduate and undergraduate students. And they offer both BA and BS degrees in chemistry, as well as a BS in biochemistry. They also offer master's degrees, master's of science degrees in chemistry. They have research emphases that cross all of the fields of chemistry, all the subfields of chemistry, I should say. But, uh, there's there's uh, biochemistry there, you see. There's organic chemistry, analytical chemistry, physical chemistry with applications that run the gamut from biological applications to purely chemical applications uh, to industrial applications. And uh, like I said, they're one of the more research active of the departments and are therefore uh, one of the better funded. So um, that's one of, our, uh, one of our main highlights for that department. I see a question about the difference between a BA and a BS. The Bachelor of Arts degree has fewer credits. Some of the upper division courses will, um, are some you don't have to take to get the Bachelor of Arts degree. The Bachelor of Science usually has more credits and it has a few more of those. Usually they're upper division intensive lab courses or maybe it's a theory course or two. But basically it's a difference in the number of credits is the main difference. The Department of Computer Science. So this department is our fastest growing program in the college. They offer a BS in computer science and a BS in computer information system security, which is what's called a two plus two degree. I'll, go, I'll come back to that in just a minute. So they also offer master's degrees in computer science. And within the umbrella that we call computer science, it's a very dynamic and rapidly changing discipline as you might imagine. And so we sort of have these broad emphases in the, within the department that, that are able to adapt and change to the, to the rapidly evolving and rapidly changing field that is computer science. And so within that department, we have people who are interested in things ranging from big data, data science, to analytics, to uh, security, as I said, to um, mobile application development, um, to informatics, uh, and basically those are very broad brush um, and there's a lot that goes underneath any of those. Um, so 
it's very hard to say exactly this is these are the very many the points we we like to hit with computer science because like i said it's a very quickly rapidly developing evolving discipline but we try to keep people that, that faculty interest and faculty research interests are broad enough to adapt to that so the bs in computer information system security like i said is a two plus two degree and what that means is that you can start the first two years of that program at a community college and you can take an AST, an associate science transfer degree in either information systems or computer science and transfer into this program and do your final two years at Western. This degree is not technically a computer science degree. It is an information systems degree and it's focused on information system security. So you have a, um, a very specialized bachelor's degree that has a very high demand in the workplace at the moment. And that's kind of a, that's kind of the reason why we set the program up as we did. It's also what we call um, an opportunity pathway for students to come through the university who don't come in as a freshman in their first year out of high school to, to Western. Maybe they do something else. Maybe they go through a part of a community college program and get themselves interested in this program. So that's one of the reasons that program was constructed and adapted for that kind of thing. The computer science program itself, like I said, is our most rapidly growing and students have an opportunity to participate in research in computer science and that spans the gamut from basic research to research with national labs like Pacific Northwest National Lab. We have a, an active collaboration with them. Um, there are, there are uh, industrial projects that are available so that a company will come with a particular problem that they would like to see solved and we can Typically what we do is we assemble a group of students and maybe one or two faculty who then work with the liaisons from that company on whatever problem they're interested in solving. Usually it has about a year timeline on it so the students get the, the feel for what it's like to work under deadlines and have to have deliverables and all of those things that the, that the industrial sector is looking for from someone in this field. Let me just check real quick. Okay, so um, yeah, let me um, let me catch a couple of these in sort of a broad brush. Um, there we are. We do have two new building projects in the works um, for the college. One is a, what's called an, an interdisciplinary science building, and what that's going to house is basically the teaching laboratories and some classrooms associated with biology with chemistry and with environmental sciences and with the marine and coastal science program and the purpose of that is to be able to move some of the lab teaching labs out of the biology and chemistry buildings so that we can expand some research spaces and help expand the programs that's the main focus of that building then we also have a building that's being planned and we're currently in the pre-design and working at the design phase of a computer science electrical and computer engineering building and it's going to be a building that's attached to the current communications facility, which is on the south end of campus, which won't mean a lot to those of you who haven't been here. But the point is, that's where the computer science department is currently housed. So we're basically going to be building a facility that will be attached to that one in some way with some sky bridges. And it will be a new standalone facility as well that will hold a bunch of laboratories uh, for the electrical and computer engineering and allow for some research expansion space for the Department of Computer Science. That building is being funded with the help of private support. So private, private individuals and also companies are, 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 are giving us money to help with the state money to help us get that building built. Uh, we should start building that building if all goes according to plan, depending on what's going on with the current environment. As you know, things have gotten a little mixed up, but hopefully we'll get to go ahead with that project starting um, in the summer of 21. Uh, let's see. So th there's a question here about applying for the computer science major. So all of our majors currently have a process that's basically an application process. Every, every major except mathematics, which I'll get to in a moment. So the, basically the way that all works is you take your required courses for your first two years. So your freshman and sophomore years have a, for a particular major will have some required courses. 
And at that time, you can either become a phase one major or a pre-major for that program. And depending on how you do in those, in those performance indicator courses in those first years, then you can apply for um, the major itself. And that's, that's pretty much how it works in computer science, certainly in engineering. Uh, biology is going to a, a, that, that next year. Um, the others have a look at that. It's not a strict bar where you cannot get in if you don't do X, Y, or Z, but they do sort of look at the, how things are going for you and give you some personalized advice as to how you might get into the major from where you are. So all, of the, all the departments have some program like that. It's not designed to be scary or frightening or any of that. It's really designed to help set you up for success once you've gotten into the major so that you know what you know, you know what you need to know to go forth in that major and be successful. That's the main idea there. So just before we uh, get any more of those, let me move on just a little bit. So the next department in our college is the Department of Engineering and Design. The Department of Engineering and Design offers these four degree programs right now. The Bachelor of Science in Electrical and Computer Engineering, which is relatively self-explanatory. The Bachelor of Science in Manufacturing Engineering, which is something I'll talk about in a minute. The Bachelor of Science in Plastics and Composites Engineering, and then the Industrial Design major. So those of you who have been interested in your life in engineering, you've probably heard of electrical engineering or electrical and computer engineering. So you know pretty much what that's about. Um, the manufacturing engineering program is kind of a, of a thing of its own. Basically, it's the, the engineering processes that go into manufacturing something. So it's interested in automation and integration of processes. So it's like process engineering, but also with, with equipment like robots and other like, and people involved in assembly processes and assembly lines and systems. So it's how to engineer those processes and how to automate them. That's the main idea. The plastics and composites engineering program, now it has the word plastics in it, which I often get questions about. That, that's one thing that, especially when we have the live audience versions of these, we get to have a real discussion about this. Some people might wonder, well, if plastics are causing so much problem in the world, why are we doing this? And my answer to that is that if you look at it, if you look around you and you look at how much the role is played by plastics and composite materials in the world, if you, anywhere you look around you in your home or anywhere you go, you're gonna see that plastics dominate. And so therefore the way to solve any environmental issues, any industrial issues, any safety issues, it, the way to approach any of that is to engineer our way to a better system. And that's, that's really the focus of this program is how to do more sustainable, um, versions of engineering of plastic materials and, and how to do sustainable engineering and manufacture of plastics and composite materials. And it also dovetails well with many of the large industrial partners in this region, like Boeing and all of Boeing's sort of supply chain. There's a lot of composite materials and a lot of plastic engineering that goes into that. So that's a program that's sort of engineered, no pun intended, to dovetail well with the region and how it works in the, in the region of Washington State. Industrial design is a, is a program that's sort of the art and engineering piece. It's, it's, so the design piece is very much like the design that you'd see in an art department where you really are working on design as a, as a creative process and how to mesh that with the needs of an industrial process as well. So like the human interface with whatever it is, whether it's a mechanical device or, or something that you use every day, like a chair or a table, or maybe it's interfacing with electronics. It's the design process of that sort of, how do you make that human world interact with the industrial world or with the world of things is sort of the, the, the picture behind that. The Department of Geology is another one of our more well-known research programs. Um, the Department of Geology produces both BS in geology degrees and BS geophysics degrees, as well as masters of science degrees in geology. The field of geology, like some of the others I've mentioned, is very broad and has many subfields, most of which are well represented at Western. We have uh, folks who are interested in you know, the volcanoes, volcanology, seismology, uh, geophysics is the study of the planet itself or planets, the, the sort of formation and dynamics of how planets work on a, on a large scale. 
Um, there's obviously there's things like mineralogy and some of the hard rock geology. Uh, the program also features a, a field camp experience where the students get to go out and spend a couple of weeks in the field somewhere. And usually it's out of state, somewhere in Idaho or Montana or Wyoming, do, learning how to do mapping and survey, learning how to do the basic tools that a geologist needs to do field work. And that's part of a, of a process for um, those of you who would take a BS in geology, that would be part of the degree program. Um, it's very much a lively, well-known program that produces people who, who go off in many directions, go for graduate study in geology, or they go to become, they work for the United States Geological Survey, or they work for a private firm. Um, there's a lot of places that a geology uh, major can go. <coughs> Excuse me. And like I said, the, the geophysics program, it overlaps with the physics program. And we have a planetary scientist and we're building more uh, capacity in the, in the area of planetary science. That's, the, that's really the study of planets and planetary processes. The person that we have in planetary science is um, a woman named Melissa Rice and her research specialty is associated with Mars. She works on all the Mars rover projects. She has a major project on the upcoming Mars 2020 as well as the Curiosity rover. Uh, she works closely with the Jet Propulsion Labs and her students get to go there. They get to see uh, how the, the rovers are driven, how, they're, how you decide where they're gonna go and what data they're gonna take. Um, and we're working on expanding that program with hiring more folks in the area of planetary science. The math program, this is one that I'm sure is gonna excite everyone. Everyone's probably standing up from their chairs now thinking about how excited they are. This is actually a very strong department. It's one of our, again, one of our largest departments because the math department has not only the Bachelor of Science in Mathematics, both Applied and Pure, a BS in Statistics, and a BA edu Ed Math. So that's, a, that's for those folks who wanna become primary or secondary math teachers. There's also a master's program in the math department as well. And um, it also serves the rest of the campus. So all the other programs, of course, math is something that all students would have to take at one point or another, no matter what their major is. So the math department is a very large service department. Many of our undergraduates, upper division undergraduates and our graduate students get to participate in the teaching and learning of math at the, at the elementary level so that uh, there's a broad range of possible things that a math major gets to do. Um, Again, the, the, the program is very broad. There are people in every area you can imagine of both applied and pure mathematics. So research opportunities are abundant for students who wanna know what research in mathematics looks like. The statistics program is one that's, that meshes with many, many departments on campus, because as you imagine, especially when it comes to things like analytics and big data, that's something that's not just of interest to a mathematician or a statistician, but to people in business, people in biology, people in uh, sports science, people in medicine. So those are all places where the st statisticians can overlap. Um, a lot of our mathematicians collaborate with, with researchers in other departments, in, in chemistry and physics and engineering. So the math department is, like I said, it's very dynamic and very active. And it's a, it's, a, it's a very big pillar of what we do here. The Department of Physics and Astronomy is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, they offer a BS degree in physics and a minor in astronomy. Now you might wonder why a, a minor in astronomy. And the, the main reason is that astronomy on its own is uh, if you wanted to do astronomy as a professional astronomer, you would really need to go to graduate school and get an advanced degree in astronomy. And the way to do that is with a physics bachelor's degree that has an astronomy background, but that's gonna set you up with the tools that you need to go to that graduate program and to be able to succeed. The BS in physics is also one that's um, laden with research opportunities. And by the way, this picture right here, the one you see right, this is Melissa Rice, the one I was telling you about, talking, giving a public talk about her research with the Mars rover projects. She, like I said, she's a joint appointment with geology and that geophysics program that bridges the two departments. Also in physics is our interest in what are called condensed matter and materials physics. So the, the physics of exotic materials and magnetism and things like that. We have people interested in, in um, theoretical physics. So 
<clears throat> although the physics degree, the BS, doesn't have tracks to it where you go in different directions, you do have opportunities to do research in a wide variety of areas, including astronomy, astrophysics, planetary science, condensed matter and materials physics, quantum mechanics, and applied theoretical physics. So they do that one of the programs that does not have a graduate program. But again, the, one of the big reasons is that a master's degree in physics is, is um, not really a, 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 what we would call a terminal degree. So um, if, there, if you've heard of a master's in applied physics or a professional science master's in physics, those would be more the directions one might take in with that. So the two programs, the two unit programs I mentioned, um, these are not departments, but they're programs that, that fall under the auspices of the College of Science and Engineering. One is AMSEC, which is the Advanced Material Science and Engineering Center. And mostly what that is, is it you, takes this focus on material science and broadens it to include researchers from different departments and different disciplines working together on a common problem. So often it hits on, on interesting problems that are kind of at the margins of what we would call typical science disciplines, or maybe it fall between disciplines. So we have people from chemistry, um, people from engineering, people from geology, physics, uh, math, are all faculty affiliates of the Advanced Material Science and Engineering Center. And basically these folks will work together and they'll get, they'll usually they'll bring in federal funding to do research together. And again, usually the topics are highly inter or multidisciplinary. And um, you see in the picture here, this was one of the prizes that this group of students won for something called a solar window. And just to give you an idea of what, what, um, how material science works in this way. So what the solar window is, uh, consists of is basically, imagine a piece of basically transparent plastic and you embed into it some very long chain molecules that absorb sunlight and then re-emit it at, at specific lower wavelengths that get trapped inside the plastic. So the sunlight comes into the plastic, gets absorbed by these, these molecules and then fluoresced and then the, the light bounces along inside and goes out the edges. So if you can imagine something that you would hold up in the sunlight and then the edges would glow in a bright orange or maybe a bright reddish orange color because of all the sunlight getting trapped and concentrated inside there is transported out to the sides around the, the edges. Now the advantage of that is that you can then put photovoltaics, the little like a solar panel if you will, on the edges of the plastic and you absorb all of the sunlight that you would have with the whole area of the plastic, only it's just on the edges. So you're using much less photovoltaic material, which is expensive, but you're generating the same amount of electricity. So you can imagine on a, something like a giant skyscraper, for instance, which is a glass building that's very large, when you have a day in the summer where the sun is blasting in there, one of the things you have to do is attenuate the sunlight so it doesn't get to be 200 degrees inside the building. So what this does is it actually attenuates the, it cuts out a lot of the sunlight that's coming in through the glass and uses that sunlight to, to create electricity to power the building. And that was a project done by this group of students. And so they did the chemistry, they did the physics, they did the engineering, they did the business and marketing plan. So it was a, a very inter multidisciplinary project. That's a very good illustration of what the Material Science Center is all about. The next thing is the SMATE program, which, is, which stands for Science, Math, and Technology Education. This is a program that's focused on science, math, and technology education, obviously. The idea being that if you were going to be a teacher, or you are a teacher, or you have ambitions to, be, um, to get a master's degree in teaching, this is a place to get immersed in science education or math education or engineering computer science education as a discipline. So research in the discipline. And you can come out with a master's degree in, in science education and you can have specialties in secondary teaching in say math or secondary teaching in science or secondary teaching in say computer science. So you, you would do, instead of just getting a teaching certificate with an endorsement in one area, you'd get immersed in the, the whole flavor and field of say, let's pick on science for a minute, on science education and all of the research that's been taking place on how human beings learn 
how your brain works when you're learning science is a discipline in, in and of itself. And so in this program, you'd be exposed to that and you'd get to learn all of that as well as your practicum and your, and your student teaching and all of that. So that program houses that experience and also allows us to do outreach to the community to help with teachers who are already out there who can come back to the program and work together with our students and our faculty on in-service um, experiences that enhance their own teaching abilities. So anything that has to do with the K through 12 teaching or even pre-K through 12 teaching it runs under the auspices and under the umbrella of the SMAKE program. So that gives you a very broad brush overview of the college itself. And I know I've skipped a lot of questions here, but I wanted to, to make sure that I got to every one of the programs before we run out of time, which we do have some time left, which is good. So let me take time now and just simply answer questions. Um, oh, here's, this is actually a good one here. The talk, can computer science majors contribute to the Mars project? Um, yeah, the computer science people in particular, but most of the college in general is very collaborative. Um, a lot of the faculty in many of the departments work with faculty outside of that department and sometimes even outside of the college itself. It's really one of the reasons why I enjoy Western so much is that it's not only this, this sense that undergraduates have something to offer and we really need to bring undergraduates into the experience of doing research and doing science, doing math. We need to get them authentic experiences, but it's the notion that we work with each other. So yes, there is, there is collaboration between folks in computer science and many of the other disciplines and collaboration, like I said, between folks in chemistry, for instance, who work on polymer chemistry, often work with the plastics folks in the engineering department because they have common problems that they might work on. Um, so that's one of the things that's about the culture and the atmosphere here at Western that I would like to really emphasize. And that is this collaboration between faculty, between faculty and students, between students and students, between graduate students and faculty and graduate students and undergraduate students. It's really an environment where this collaboration really does take place. Sorry, a bunch of these questions just went by. Maybe. Um, Okay, so in general, there's a question here about that I can answer for generally too. Um, transferring and wanting to get into the computer science BS and wanting, wondering what it's like the competition. Uh, there is a lot of pressure, enrollment pressure currently on those degree programs and uh, especially computer science, electrical and computer engineering, certainly in biology. Um, and I don't wanna, there's two things. I don't wanna like, dis, I don't wanna discourage you but I also don't want to lie to you. There are a lot of enrollment pressures on those programs and getting into them. I don't want to say it's, it's, it's not easy because that, again, I don't want to be discouraging, but you do have to work hard and you do have to um, work your way into it. There's a lot of support. Um, there's a lot that can be done to help you. Um, but again, there is, there may be, uh, a quarter where you can't get the courses you need and then you will need some plan B for that quarter, et cetera. But again, we try really hard to make sure there's a lot of support in place for you to be able to talk to someone, to know what to do, how to get through those roadblocks and how to get around those roadblocks, what to do with your time and during those situations, how to avoid them in the first place. That's a very big motivator for us. And so I would, I, I would again, I don't wanna discourage, I wanna encourage, but at the same time, be realistic about how that looks. <clears throat> so there's some specific programs, uh, sp specific questions about programs. <clears throat> I'd be happy to try and answer some of those, excuse me. Um, but many of those you can get by um, going directly to the departments. So I would encourage you to go to the website for the college. And if you go to the website for the college, you'll find that all of these departments have departmental structure to them. So there's a department chair and many of them have department advisors. And they would be very, very happy to give you any department or program specific advice on some of these things or even give you more information. Again, I'm happy to do that. 
And again, normally, uh, if we were doing this the way we normally do this, I usually wait around afterwards and we can all um, stand individually and I can try to answer your individual questions. But um, this time I'm gonna try to um, advise you with, with specific questions about a specific degree that you contact that department. Um, folks are very, very much eager to help and lend a hand to make sure you get what you need. Uh, let's see. So there are questions, apparently there have been several questions about mechanical engineering. We do not offer mechanical engineering here. We, that's not a degree program that's offered at Western. Um, that is sort of a, a more mainline engineering degree that we, you could get at some place like the UW or at WSU or uh, one of the private schools. Um, instead, our program, the, the thing that would be closest in that sense would be the manufacturing engineering, which does have a mechanical piece to it. But again, the, the focus of the engineering programs here was more on how to meet regional need. How does Western Washington University, as a regional university, how do we plug in and impact our region? And so that's part of why the engineering programs that we have offered came into existence in the first place and why they're growing. Um, again, it would be to your advantage to talk to folks in the department if you're interested to see much, much more in much more detail what that's about. Uh, let's see. So there's a question, there's another general question about double majoring. Yes, there's double majoring is absolutely something you can do. Um, that's one of those things that generally takes, you, you probably want to have some idea about that when you get here so that you can start to work on the the initial components that are required of both majors. We often get a lot of double majors in things that you would either both expect, like we do get double majors in physics and math, we get a lot of that. We get a lot of double majors in things like physics and music, which you may not expect, but that seems to be something that folks have done a lot of. Um, we do have people who are interested in pre-health professions. So in other words, if you wanna to go to medical school or if you wanna to go to dental school or something like that, there's not a program at Western called pre-medical, but the, the, the thing is, is that to go to medical school, you do not need any one bachelor's degree. You can have a bachelor's degree in anything and go to medical school, but there are certain requirements that you have to meet. Um, and those are generally in, in you know, biology, chemistry, biochemistry, math, there's some physics. So we do have tracks for people on going down that road and people often double major in that case um, in one thing or another. So many, many folks going to med school will major in, on the one hand in something like biochemistry and on the other something completely unrelated. That often happens as well. The university does offer language courses. Um, there's a whole department in the College of Humanities and Social Sciences, which is another college in the, in the university called Modern and Classical Languages, and they offer whole degree programs in languages. So yes, we, and in fact, we do have a lot of majors in all of, all of the disciplines within the College of Science and Engineering. We've had many students who minored in a language, who came to Western already pretty proficient in a language, and took several language classes to enhance their education in language. That is something that certainly someone can do. Um, Someone asked if this is recorded, we get a link or copy. I, I think the admissions folks, the reason they wanted me to record it is just so they could do that. Um, I will ask about that and um, make sure that I, that I get information. I wasn't sure because that was something that came up relatively late in the game for me, but uh, I'm going to send the recording to the admissions folks and I believe they will make this available. Let's see. Oh, so there was a question that came up before, I think, apparently about um, this computer information system security being done in four years at Western. So it turns out you cannot do that uh, because it is a two plus two program. But we have had folks go off to Whatcom Community College and do their first two years and then come back and do that degree. But we've also had students who just do the four-year computer science degree 
with a track emphasis in computer system security. So you can get a computer science degree and have that as your specialty as part of your Bachelor of Science in Computer Science. That's, that's more typical for someone who comes directly to Western. Again, the, the, the idea behind the CISS program was to make a pathway for students who were non-traditional, who didn't come in a traditional sense through the four-year program. Um, more questions about marine biology. Um, that is not a degree program. I mean, it currently is one of the emphasis in the biology program, but it will become a degree of its own, but it'll be called marine and coastal sciences as a bachelor's degree. Um, and again, that will come online. Um, there, we, if you started in this fall, it would be available to you by the time you graduated. So that's, that will, that's where I would direct that kind of question. And we can certainly help answer that a little bit more. Um, so um, there are several more questions about the CS degree in cybersecurity. Can it be done in four years? Yes, it certainly can. Um, again, I think there's a, if, if you go to the computer science website, I think you'll be able to find a lot of information there that will help you. And I also would direct you to people there who have, um, who spend all of their days advising about the curriculum in computer science. Um, when it comes to computer science, the person you're interested in is Mary Hall. And for cybersecurity, the person you're interested in is named Eric Fretheim. So those are some folks that you could contact directly to get some questions answered about those specific programs. Um, there's been a general question about class sizes, and that's always a good question. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I forgot to say that. <clears throat> Excuse me, I usually try to answer that ahead of time. So Western is very different than something like the University of Washington in the sense that you will never have an, an enormous class. The largest class you'll ever have would be something in the first year uh, or the pipeline sequence of some of these courses like physics or chemistry. Um, and those classes tend, tend to be around 70. <clears throat> and that'd be your biggest class. The lab component around those would have 24. So it'd be in a lecture with 70, a lab with 24. By the time you get to be a senior, um, in, many of the in many of the programs, the, lot, the size of your course is around, um, some of them around 20, depending on the course, they range from 20 to 50. So class sizes are never very large, especially compared to some place like the University of Washington. But at the same time, our program emphasis is still very, very broad. We still have a broad reach of the types of programs that we offer and the depth in which you can explore those programs. So I like to think of Western as kind of a very nice balance between breadth and depth in that way. And yet, and again, enough, small enough classes that you will have interactions with your professors and it will be professors teaching your courses. That's another hallmark of the Western experience. Uh, So most of these others are fairly specific questions. So um, again, I would encourage you to contact a program you're specifically interested in. And if you need help with that, you can always email me or, and I can help direct you with that. Um, that's another way I can get you to the right people. <clears throat> Um, there apparently have been a couple of questions grouped around a distinguished scholars program. So that program is, uh, if you've been reached out to, uh, so, uh, the, that is being run and recruited through the departments that do it and with the help of the admissions folks here at Western. Um, there's uh, different types of scholars programs. Uh, there's some that are specific to disciplines and there's one that's through the Howard Hughes Medical Institute program, which is basically designed to get students from underrepresented groups together in cohorts and to get them into their pipeline courses together to try and help build community. Building community is a big motivator for us. Uh, we're really interested in, in equity and inclusion and making sure that students get um, 
the quality of opportunity, that the, that the atmosphere, the culture, and the environment is inclusive. Um, so that's a program that helps to cohort folks. And most of our individual programs have also worked relatively hard on trying to make sure that when students are, are admitted to a program, that they're, they're part of the culture and they're part of that environment that that, the, that that department is trying to create. And there's a lot of emphasis in trying to make sure that communication between students and between students and faculty is open and is inclusive. So um, that's one of the ways that, that our Distinguished Scholar program is trying to work. Uh, we have that one. We have one that's designed to get students into the math computer science track, again, with the notion of trying to build community, trying to build a sense of a cohort as you move through the programs. Okay, so um, I think that's about all the time we have. Um, and I want to say thank you very much from the bottom of my heart for you taking uh, the time out to join this. I know it's a bit of a strange format. Hopefully, hopefully we're all getting used to this a little bit. Um, but um, I do appreciate all of you joining this. Um, I appreciate all of the time that you've taken and the time you've taken to ask, ask questions. If you have specific questions, again, and something didn't, that we didn't get to at all, I would very much encourage you to contact an individual department, the department chair, or the department coordinator, or department advisor. And if you can't find somebody, email me. My name is Brad Johnson. You can find me on the website. And we would be very much, it would be delight to help you. So again, I want to say thanks so much, and I hope that it was informative. And if anything didn't, if we didn't get into anything, please contact somebody, either somebody in the department or me. And again, thanks so much, everybody.